Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. We're going to get started. Just a few housekeeping items before we do. The webinar is being recorded and will be sent out within 24 hours to everyone who registered. So if you need to jump off at any point, no worries. The recording will be in your inbox soon. And if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to ask away in the Q&A box and we'll address them at the end of the webinar. So with that, I'll hand it over to Ari Paparo and to Dan Hostetler from he here from Beeswax to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about our latest product, Bid Models. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. This is Ari Paparo, the CEO and co-founder of Beeswax. Um, I'm really excited about today's webinar and today's announcement. Um, so um, I want to give a bit of an introduction, but first let me uh, ask Dan to introduce himself. Hi everyone, uh, it's Dan Hostetler from Beeswax and Director of Product Management here. Um, so since Beeswax was founded, we have uh, been pushing the envelope on empowering advertisers uh, to take control over their programmatic advertising. And a big part of uh, the concept of programmatic advertising is the algorithms that generate the actual bids. Uh, the general topic of optimization has been uh, one of the key things that customers have been looking for from Beeswax. And we, uh, we've always had the most flexible ability to let our customers build their own optimization. We have a technology we call the bidding agent that lets customers really roll their own code for their own optimization. Uh, last year, we introduced our bid modifier product, which we think was a very flexible way for um, bringing your own algorithm without using as much code and was so somewhat similar to some of the other products that are out there in the market that people are familiar with that give uh, control over the bidding. Um, but today's very different. Um, so we're introducing a new product called Bid Models uh, that uh, Dan will be going through in some depth. Um, and Bid Models allows you to uh, develop and execute very sophisticated uh, bidding strategies um, without the need to write your own code. It effectively uh, takes the real problem, which is analyzing and deploying data, and enables you to execute against that problem, um, which we think and we've already seen has given great results for customers and, uh, and really is a very manageable uh, process with low total ownership cost, low total investments. Um, so with that introduction, I'm gonna hand it over to Dan to walk through the product. Great, thanks Ari. Okay, so today I wanna talk about a few things. Uh, we're gonna start off doing a little bit of history of like, why are we here? Why are we building this product? Uh, then we're gonna go into uh, the bid models product itself. Um, so we're gonna talk about how that works. Uh, we'll, we'll go over a few uh, use cases for the product, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit at the end about um, sort of upcoming features, what's available now, what's coming soon, uh, before doing some QA. Um, as we go, you know, feel free to post uh, questions to the chat, and we will definitely address those at the end. Okay, so, so let's get started and talk a little bit about why we're here. Um, I want to do that by... Uh, doing a sort of a, a very high level overview of, of what are we trying to achieve. Um, what we're really trying to achieve is this thing we keep talking about optimization. And so in general, what, what we mean when we say optimization is, is maximizing some, some thing while, while minimizing or keeping something else constant. Um, and specifically in, in programmatic, usually that thing that we're trying to maximize is you know, clicks or installs. Um, it could be unique reach, you know, depending on the use case, but it's always some, some metric that we want to maximize. And the thing we're, we're sort of keeping constant or minimizing is obviously our media cost, um, but also maybe we have constraints around budget or uh, specific inventory or inventory types uh, that we want to sort of hold constant while maximizing that, that metric. Okay, and, and, and sort of traditionally, uh, up to this point, you've had two options. Option one is you use the sort of walled garden or black box algorithms provided by sort of traditional DSPs. Um, these, these, you know, you, you press go and, and you get whatever performance it gives you. Um, you may not get much precision out of it and you don't really know what's happening behind the scenes. You don't know what data is being used, whether data is being shared or not shared. Um, and, and so there's sort of a lack of flexibility and a, a lack of comfort with those sometimes. On the other end of the spectrum is to really build your own. Um, and this, this is great because you can sort of do whatever you want, but it becomes very expensive, both from a, a you know, financial perspective, as well as from a uh, cost of ownership, operational perspective, that kind of thing. Um, and so, so with either of these options, you're really giving something up. You're either giving up precision 
or you're giving up you know, money and time by sort of having to over-engineer something that should be somewhat commoditized. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about what the options really are to date. So at the sort of bare minimum, original basic level, we have what a traditional DSP offers, which is basically you have a bunch of line items on a campaign, and each of those line items has some targeting for things that you expect to perform. Um, so that could be, you know, in this example, um, you know, it could be a device type plus a time of day plus a whitelist of app bundles or, or sites that you know to perform. Um, the problem with this is that you end up with sort of this prolifer proliferation of line items. Um, and it becomes very un unwieldy, hard to manage, hard to understand what's really performing and what's not. Um, so sort of the next, the next thing that came along is, is this concept of bid multipliers, where you start with a base bid, um, and then you can manipulate that base bid by any of a number of uh, factors on a, on a bid request. That could be time of day, it could be device type, um, and, and that's good, right? It, it, it gives you more control and it's useful and it can be pretty easy to implement, but it can be also limiting. Um, as soon as you want to start looking at what happens when I look at the cross section of time of day and device type, uh, this model kind of falls apart because we're not able to uh, look at sort of multivariate analyses of the data and, and act on those. Um, so, so we can get some level of optimization, but we start to bid very erratically. We start to see very erratic behavior as the number of factors we're using gets large. Um, and so what we really want is to say in this specific scenario where these n number of things are present, this is exactly how much I want to bid. Okay, and this, this has been achieved in the past through what we were talking about earlier with a totally custom uh, bidding agent or bidding stack. So again, it is achievable, but it can be very practically difficult to achieve when you consider the engineering resources involved and the uh, overhead and investment involved in that. And so if we look at sort of what the landscape looks like, there's a very sort of linear relationship between how much control you have over how you're buying media and the investment or the complexity required to achieve that. Um, at, at sort of the base level, we have those, those standard sort of black box algorithms that are easy to use, but you don't really know what's going on. In the middle, we have sort of the, the multiplier type product that gives you some control with relatively low investment, but still not the control you really want. And then at the top end, you know, um, you can build your own or there's products like Beeswax's bidding agent that does allow you to implement um, code level control with some investment. Um, so, so what we're trying to achieve with bid models now is to really break that curve and keep the control high while lowering the complexity and the investment. Um, so the idea with bid models really is that we've, we've got this product that sits in between the bid modifiers and the bidding agent and allows us to say exactly how much we wanna bid in every scenario. So what we've done is we've taken that table from a few slides ago, and we've really made that the thing that you give us. Um, so we, the bid models product itself is quite literally, the, the asset is a data table you provide to Beeswax that we then upload into the system and uh, sort of host and, and traffic in real time. Um, it, it can have as many sort of columns as you like, and those columns can be sort of any field from the bid request. Um, it can be as simple as my example here with you know, three or four fields, or it could be 50 fields and be very, very, very detailed. Um, it can be as big as you want. We can support millions and millions of rows in this. So if you want to have a row for every unique combination of app bundle, time of day, and device type, you can do that. Um, and then the, the, the sort of way that this model is used is you can provide for each row either a bid, and that is the actual CPM bid we will use, or a bid multiplier that gets multiplied into a base bid, uh, either is supported. And so we think, we think, you know, we'll go into the details of how this, this product is actually executed in a few minutes, but we think that, um, we think that the, this, this product sits in that high, uh, control low complexity quadrant of this graph that really no other product sits in today. And that's sort of why we're really, really excited about it.
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how the product actually works. Um, so we, we sort of think of this and the, the customers that we've had piloting this pr product think of this in sort of three stages. Uh, so stage one is all about uh, collecting data and data modeling. Um, I, think, I think an important thing to, to point out here is that in order to really successfully optimize, you need access to a lot of data. Um, you, need, you need to see what you're bidding on, what you're winning, what you're not winning, what, what else is out there that, that you could be bidding on or, or winning on that maybe you're not. And so with, with Beeswax, we give you access to all that, right? We give you access to raw auction logs, whether you're bidding on them or not. We give you access to bid logs, regardless of whether you won those auctions or not. And then we give you the win and conversion logs to tell you what's performing and what's not performing. Um, once, once you have that data, the idea is that a, a data scientist or an analyst can take that data set and, and build a, a machine learning model, um, you know, whether that's a, a regression analysis or something more complex, um, and, and predict your outcome metric. Uh, a, a canonical example is to do a, a CPA, you know, a cost per acquisition or cost per install model, where you're taking conversion logs, um, and joining those to your win logs and understanding what are the, the factors or the, the variables of an auction that indicate a high likelihood of conversion and really building a model that, that can predict that for any given auction. Okay, um, once you've done that, uh, the data scientist generates those data files from that model that we sort of looked at. And again, those can be very small and concise or they can be very large. Uh, those models are uploaded to uh, AWS's S3 storage, and then you tell our system where to pick them up, uh, and we, we will load those into a cache in our system uh, that will be ready to serve when you have a campaign go live. Um, the, the last step, obviously, is to take that bid model and attach it to a campaign and actually traffic that campaign in the real world. And every time a bid request comes in, we will attempt to match that bid request to one of the rows in the, the bid model that you provided and take action based off that. So if there's a hit, we will, we will use the, the value we get for the bid. Um, I'll, I'll go a little more into detail on some of these. Um, so again, usually this is gonna require some auction or win logs. Um, depending on the conversion event that we're trying to, uh, to optimize for, whether that's a click or an install or a, a view through or something like that. Um, the, the sort of modeling techniques supported here is, is really up to you. Um, we, we very intentionally tried to take a tool agnostic approach, not require um, you know, any custom or proprietary coding language on our side or require data to be uh, represented in some, some complex format. Um, we really wanted users to be able to uh, use the tools they're familiar with. So whether that's R or Python or even just Excel, it's totally agnostic and you can use whatever you want. Uh, we just need you to generate those uh, prediction files as CSVs for us. Uh, and then finally, how this is actually uploaded. Um, if you're familiar with our bid modifiers product, um, the bid model is actually attached to the campaign via a bid modifier. Um, so you just cl click into a line item, um, select your bid model, and you're kind of good to go. Um, the bid model can be used as a bid or a multiplier, as I discussed. Um, and then the bid model also supports versioning, which we found to be really important. Uh, so as, as your model uh, buys media and you see how well it's performing, you can, you can iterate on it, upload a new version of it, and, and sort of refine the performance over time. And we're seeing customers right even now um, achieving very good results over time and, and reducing their uh, CPIs and CPAs very dramatically from what they were seeing sort of pre-bid models. Um, the other sort of monitoring tool that we do have in place is we actually write the predictions back into log files. Uh, so if you want to see uh, what auctions you actually are, are getting a prediction for from your bid model or not, that, that is possible as well. Um, one other sort of good feature that I wanted to point out is that 
uh, bid models does work with bid modifiers. So uh, the, the, the example I like to talk about here is that if you want to control your bidding for uh, inventory and your bid adjustments for user level data independently, you can do that in this way. Uh, the example would be that you could have a bid model that says how much to bid for a given slice of inventory, let's say uh, device type and inventory source and time of day. That gives me my sort of base bid. And then let's say I have a retargeting segment um, where I've assigned a value to each, each user or device in that retargeting segment. Um, I can actually use that value as a multiplier on top of my bid model value to sort of manipulate bids for an individual device as we see it in the bid stream. So let's talk a little bit about some specific use cases here. Um, we've talked a little bit about optimizing for CPI or CPA already. Uh, this, is, this is, again, a, a sort of um, canonical example and, and how we're seeing this used very heavily today already, where we're, a customer will take uh, conversion logs and win logs, and they will build a model to predict the likelihood of a conversion for any given bid request, and then back into a bid value for that. Um, this can also be used in conjunction with our pacing system. Uh, so let's say that you want to deliver steadily over some period of time, uh, but you wanna optimize which inventory you actually are buying within that sort of broader swath of inventory. Uh, you can do that with bid models. Um, we talked a little bit again about combining user scores with bid models as well. Uh, so again, any, any sort of retargeting or prospecting use case where you do have a user list ahead of time uh, and you want to adjust your bids based off of those specific users and their expected value, that can be done with bid models plus bid modifiers. Um, and then if you want to manipulate based off of sort of uh, zip code data or localized data, that's also possible. So let's say you have a, an idea of what the weather is in a given zip code at any given time. Um, and you want to adjust, you know, it's raining somewhere, so you want to adjust the bids up or down in the zip codes where it's raining. Uh, the, the system is actually fast enough that you can upload those, those model versions every few minutes and stay up to date with real-time events like that. Cool. Uh, so last thing I want to touch on before we open it up to questions is sort of where we are today and where we're going with this. You know, I think, I think this product is one that, as, as Ari said, we're very excited about um, and that we, we plan to invest in a lot over the, the coming weeks and months and, and quarters. Um, so today, this product is available uh, at no cost. Uh, you just need to reach out to your account team to have it enabled and, and we can turn it on for you. Um, what sort of the, the additional features that are available now, as I said, you can, you can use segments with a bid model and actually do this user scoring. We also do have the bid model responses in the logs if you receive logs. Uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll be supporting wildcard fields in the bid model. So for example, if you have a list of app bundles that you want to optimize against and you wanna have a catch all for sort of any other app bundle, uh, that will be supported in the next couple of weeks. Um, we're also adding some additional monitoring features, which was some good feedback we got from our, our beta program uh, to actually show in, in real time, uh, how is a model performing? Uh, and then coming up in sort of the, the not too distant future, we're also working on an A-B testing framework that will allow for uh, sort of comparing model A versus model B and before actually promoting a new model to promote to production. Uh, we do have a few resources out there today. Uh, there is a public Google Doc uh, that is linked here, and we'll, I believe we're going to send this out afterwards, um, that has all of these supported fields from logs and, and that can be used in bid models. Uh, we have some technical docs around the APIs and, and how to actually upload and traffic a bid model at our docs.beeswax.com site. Uh, and finally, there is a, a technical tutorial uh, with some sample data that actually walks through how to use logs, build a model from those logs, and turn that model into a set of uh, prediction files that Beeswax can understand. And that's on GitHub. Uh, thanks, and we're gonna open it up to questions now. I'm gonna turn it back over to Millie to facilitate that. 
Thanks so much, Daniel. Um, so we see some great questions coming in. Um, if you do have questions, please be sure to enter them into the Q&A box. Um, and otherwise, we'll get started and Ari and Daniel will answer these questions. So the first question we have is, what resources do I need to invest in to run my own optimization through bid models? Yeah, so that's a good question. I think the goal here was to build a product that requires maybe some data science and data analyst type of resources, but not specifically require engineering resources. So what we're seeing uh, with customers that are doing this today is you know, one data scientist or a data scientist and an analyst are able to sort of execute this end to end uh, without help from any engineering. Great. Um, and is there any limit on the number of bid models that can be generated? Uh, there's no limit on the number of bid models that can be generated. I'd say the sort of guidance that we're providing right now is uh, for sort of CPI, CPA type of use cases. Generally, it's it's one model per offer or per sort of um, app or, or product that you're optimizing for. Great. Are there any limitations with respect to meeting the ad exchange response time limits? Uh, so we kind of take care of that for the customer here. Um, because you give us this file sort of outside the bit stream or these files, um, and we, we upload them into our system, we take care of all the complexity of managing latency and other things like that. So we, we, that's not really something the customer needs to worry about at all. It, it's, for those of you who are current Beeswax customers, um, the, uh, the difference between this product and a bidding agent is really a order of magnitude of simplicity. Uh, with our bidding agent, you have total control, but you have to spin up your own servers and you have to uh, worry about latency and a bunch of other things. With bid models, we're really taking care of the whole thing for you. Sounds great. And are there any limits on the amount of third-party data that can be used? Uh, no, so the, the third party data can be used in two ways. Uh, one way, obviously, is that you can join it into logs in the process of actually building a, a bid model. And then the other way, obviously, is that you can use those, those third party data segments that are uploaded into Beeswax to modify the bids further as we were discussing in sort of that retargeting use case. And does bid models work the same way on mobile app and web inventory? It does work the same way on both. Are there any limits to the line number of line items you can have within a bid model? Uh, no, currently we don't limit the number of lines in a model. Um, there's probably some, some sort of practical reasons to be concise in some scenarios. Uh, just, you know, if, if you go too detailed on a model, uh, it, you know, you may not see the performance you want in terms of, of bidding, but um, the, the system supports as many lines as someone wants to upload. Great, and one question just came through. When you say you'll provide model monitoring in the next couple of weeks, does that mean simple performance concerns like number of requests addressed or analytical monitoring like how, we, how well the, mo the model is performing? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think, I think we're going to start with more of the former, you know, giving you metrics around um, how, what percentage of the bid requests to a line item are actually matching to a model. Uh, we find that that's, that's a really useful thing to try to optimize, just like you want to have good coverage. Um, and then as the product develops and we gain more feedback, we'll definitely look at other types of monitoring, uh, like you mentioned. And how do you translate a value or the output of an analyst model into an actual bid? Is it effectively a max CPM or something more sophisticated? Yeah, good question. So I think it again, it sort of depends on the um, on the the metric that we're optimizing towards. I'll, I'll sort of again reference back to the the CPI um, use case. Uh, so if if I have a desired cost per install, um, and I have a a probability of install for a given auction, um, I can pretty with some pretty simple math back into what sort of my maximum bid should be. Uh, for, for that particular auction. Uh, and then I can sort of reduce that further by looking at some of the market dynamics data you can get from logs. So for example, if I know that my maximum bid is pretty well above uh, sort of the typical clearing price for that piece of inventory, I can reduce that bid down. 
Um, let me just add to what Daniel said on that one, which is, uh, and he pointed this out in the presentation, the output, the value field in the bid model can be used either as a bid itself or as a multiplier. And if you use as a multiplier, then you can apply a max bid at the line item level to protect yourself against overbidding. Um, let me take that one. Um, and for security and privacy reasons, can all the features be hashed? Uh, so we don't support hashing of the features, but with Beeswax's unique model, each customer has their own instance of the bidder. Um, so we have a pretty strict um, policy and architecture meant to prevent any of our data from leaking across customers. Next question, for those who are running custom optimization at the code level right now, would you recommend switching to a bid model strategy? I think there are real advantages to having your own code, but the trade-off has to be, can you achieve what you need to achieve or close to it with less complexity through a model of this kind? Um, the things that you can't do with a bid model, to be just totally frank, are apply sort of custom math or custom code on top of the features um, and, or do any sort of like real-time lookups. So if, you're, if your needs are to do something that where the data changes very much in real time or where you need custom math, then our bid, bidding agent product is also one of your only choices, probably the most flexible option. If your custom algorithm is mostly doing lookups and comparisons, then probably bid models would uh, save you some effort and time. Great, and if I am currently running bid modifiers, how do I add or incorporate bid models into my strategy? Well, so it depends on what you're using bid modifiers for. Bid modifiers are very flexible as well. The real distinction here is that bid models analyzes each variable on its own, and bid models can, can link up to 40 variables into a single decision. And you can imagine, just to use one example, imagine you have an app that you're targeting that is very popular, that has a very large amount of auctions involved in it. Um, using a bid modifier, you may say this app is good and always bid high if that app is present, uh, but it turns out that you get very different performance by time of day or by, uh, or by uh, Android versus iOS. Uh, with bid models, it's really easy to link those together and to create uh, numerous permutations of the combinations of these variables that actually drive performance instead of trying to kind of sort of hack it together with a mixture of frequency capping and targeting and, and bid modifiers, et cetera. This tool just does exactly what you want in that scenario. Great. And will the win and loss logs include all the new information regarding the bid model used or any specific bid model information that contributed to the bid? Yeah, so the win logs do include uh, two fields. They're actually existing fields that were used uh, with custom bidding agents before, uh, but we've added some information when you're using bid models to those fields. And the information that you get is, is two pieces. Uh, one is the, the sort of model that was actually used, so the metadata, the ID of that model and the model version that was live at that time. Uh, and then the second piece is actually the response we got back from the model for that particular bid. Uh, you know, what, what keys we looked up and what the response back from the model was and whether we used that, that value or we actually hit the max bid for some reason or something like that. And so you can imagine how you might use that data if you're, if you're running a bid model. Uh, you, you take the logs, you look at what worked and what didn't, you look at where the, variable, where the wins are or the bids were that did not have a, a hit on the bid model, and then you find the variables that you may be missing from your model. Great. And I currently use a bid multiplier strategy for optimization with my current DSP. How much more control would I get with bid models as opposed to what I use today? Well, um, it sort of depends. Uh, different DSPs have different tools, and I don't really want to speak to other te technology options out there. Um, I feel pretty confident that this will give you more control than really any of the other options available in the marketplace. Uh, like we, we've said a couple of times, we, we support now 40 features. So th those are elements of the bid request uh, that, are, uh, that can be used in a multivariate uh, model. Uh, to determine the bid. I don't think any other DSP's bid uh, multiplier, bid factors come close to that sort of flexibility. And we think it'll produce, you know, quite good results compared to this. Great. Does anybody have any more questions? If so, please send them through.
Well, why don't I just say some final words? Um, so, um, I, like I said at the beginning, I'm really excited about this product. We have uh, about a half dozen customers who've been beta testing this since the beginning of the year, seeing some really great results, uh, real drops in CPI and CPA and some performance cases. Um, and uh, Dan and his team are really doubling down. We're not done with this product by any means. We're going to be investing heavily in improvements and enhancements over the next couple of quarters. So we think this is going to be a, a real breakthrough for folks who want to control their optimization and take control over their bidding strategies. So with that, I, I think we should wrap it up. Great, so that's the end of our webinar today. If you have any questions for Daniel or Ari, feel free to reach out to them. Um, and the recorded version of this webinar will be in your inbox within 24 hours. Thank you so much.